The next subject is called the law of averages. It's so important to understand the law of averages. The law of averages in a personal sense is, is very simple. Here's what it says. If you do something often enough, you'll get a ratio of results. It's important for leaders to understand ratios. Because if you're working with people, you got to have some charts. You got to know ratios. You got to be able to evaluate your own performance, their performance. Ratios. What do we mean by ratios? Well, let's say you're in sales, you join a company and you start representing the products or the service. And you're first getting started, you talk to 10 people. Nine say, no, I wouldn't care for any. One says, yes, I'll take some. We call this your opening ratio. You say, well, that's not too good a ratio. Well, it all depends. Okay. But it's your opening ratio. So at first, you don't worry about what the numbers are. At first, you just get some activity going. Now, we call this very simply one out of 10. Now, here's what's very exciting about dealing in ratios. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. Now, this is some things leadership needs to know so that you're not frustrated. If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. If you talk to 10 more, chances excellent, you'll get another one. If you talk to 10 more, chances excellent, you'll get another one. It's uncanny. I don't even know how it works. All I know is it works. There's a lot of things you don't need to know how they work. Just work them. Right? A lot of people are studying the roots. Others are gathering the fruit. I mean, it depends on what end of this you want to get in on. It just works. It's a fascinating subject. The law of averages. Okay? Now, once you know that your ratio pretty well is in there, one out of ten, now you can start to compete. It is so important to compete, to test your skill against someone else's skill. What someone else can do is a pretty good insight and if you stretch what you might be able to do. So competition is a very healthy thing. Now, you've got to be very smart here. If you've been with this company, let's say a long time, and you've been there so long, you're so good, you can get nine out of 10, and I just joined and I can only get one out of 10. If we have a 30-day contest as to who can get the most to say yes to our product or service, if we have a 30-day contest, you and me, even though I can only get one out of 10, I will win. You say, well, I've been here a long time. I can get nine out of 10. How could you possibly beat me? It would be very simple. Now, it might not be easy, but it would be very simple. During the 30 days, since I understand now these ratios, during the month, while you talk to 10 and get nine, I will talk to 100 and get 10. So that at the end of 30 days, you got nine, I got 10, I beat you. Isn't that clever? <laughs> Let me give you a scenario here. If you're bright, what you do, if you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. This is called helping people with the numbers, helping people with ratios. Someone says, well, I can only get one out of 10. Say, that's got nothing to do with competition. But if the new person is so clever to make up in numbers what they first lack in skill, I'm telling you, you can compete even though you're new. The key is to be bright enough to understand ratios. Here's the next clue. Ratios can be increased. You talk to 10, get one, talk to 10, get one, talk to 10, get one, talk to 10 more, get two. Why would about the fourth time you talk to 10, you get two instead of one? You're getting better. Key question, who can get better? Answer, anybody who tries. All you got to do is put together the numbers, right? Your brain is as good as anybody else's. Your chances are as good. All you got to do is find a way to put out the extraordinary effort to do an ordinary thing extremely well. Ratios. Success is a numbers game. It's important to keep track of your numbers. In baseball, we call it batting average. Whatever you're doing, the key is to keep track of your success and how good you are at whatever. Someone says, well, I'm not very good on the telephone. I'll tell you how you can quickly cure all that is get on the telephone. I'm telling you, you can get better at anything. All you've got to do is attempt it and try it and start putting a string of numbers together and keeping track and understand your own ratios. I teach a very simple sales course. Let me give it to you in three points. Number one, talk to lots of people every day. It's a simple sales course. Number one, talk to lots of people. Isn't that simple? It's a numbers game, especially if you're new. And here's what's exciting. There's lots of people. You don't have to worry about people. So just talk to lots of people, even if your presentation is very poor. If you put the numbers together, I'm telling you, something will happen. If your presentation was so poor, you went around every day saying to everybody you could meet, you wouldn't want to buy anything, would you? 
Sure enough, somebody's going to say, well, maybe I would. What are you selling? I'm telling you, it's just about that simple. If you put the numbers together, if you talk to lots of people every day, two things will happen. Number one, you're bound to make sales. I'm telling you, some people buy for the strangest reasons. Hey, some people buy out of sympathy for the salesperson. I'm telling you, you can find some people that'll buy out of sympathy. They don't want to see your kids starve. I'm telling you, if you'll talk to enough people, some people will buy out of sympathy. So part of success is, you know, look pitiful to enough people, right? I'm telling you, somebody will buy. And why, why? It's because of ratios. It's because of numbers. Now, you can have a much better presentation than you wouldn't want to buy anything, would you? You can get a little brighter than that. But if you start just that simple, it's simple. Somebody says, where do you start? Anywhere. It doesn't matter. If you're in sales, you know, walk outside, find you a rock, throw it up in the air. Wherever the rock comes down, start right there. That's a good place to start. Anywhere. <laughs> the next person you see, say, sir, you're the first man after the rock. <laughs> And that'll get a conversation started. I'm telling you, they may back up while they talk, but <laughs> something will start. And the reason is understanding the numbers, the numbers. You don't have to be so cleverly skillful. All you got to do is be bright enough to understand that numbers can make up for lack of skill to begin with. And if you're in a leadership position to help people, help them with their ratios. Say, John, let's go over these numbers one more time. How many calls? And who did you talk to? So that's my sales form. It's very simple. Number one, talk to lots of people every day. You're bound to get better. You're bound to find somebody. Number two, be real nice. When the weather isn't, be real nice when people aren't. A big part of presentation is attitude, personality. And third is simple. Give good service. Write all the notes most people don't write. Do all the extra things most people don't do. Call them before they call you. Service leads to multiple sales. If you'll take good care of somebody, they'll open doors you could never open yourself. They'll take you by the hand and share you with people that you never thought you could reach. There's a unique story in the Bible. It's called the parable or the story of the sower, S-O-W-E-R. The sower in the ancient days was the person that planted the crops, very simply. They got the ground ready and the sower with a bag of seed would walk across the ground sow the seed. That's how they got the crops going. And it's a very fascinating story, and it's got a lot to say, and it's got a lot to say about our subject called the Law of Averages. There's some important points you'll pick up right away when you read the story. Here's number one. The sower was a wise man. A great advantage. They didn't send a dummy out to plant. Number two, he was very ambitious. And by the time you finish the story, you'll come to the conclusion he was ambitious. Admirable quality. Ambition. One writer said, I've learned to be both ambitious and content. That's a unique place to finally arrive, to be both ambitious and content. But this story says the sower was very ambitious. Nothing wrong with ambition, as long as you work the right formula. The sower was bright and he was also ambitious. Number three, he went to work. It takes activity to furnish the labor that brings new life. Ideas without labor are stillborn. They never become tangible. They never become real. You got to put yourself through the activity, through the labor. So when you read the story, you'll find this was a hardworking sower. We call that admirable quality. Now some interesting things that happened to the sower. It said he had excellent seed, point four. He had the best. At least the scenario of the story says he had the best of seed. Boy, it's exciting when you feel that you're involved in the best, the best product, the best service, the best idea, the best enterprise, something you feel proud about. Now with all of these qualities, he starts out and now starts to unfold the scenario of life called the law of averages. Here's what happened. The sower goes out to sow the seed and the first part of the seed that he sows falls by the wayside and the birds get it. Now I want you to understand the scenario. Here's what's very important for leaders to engage in. 
to teach the inevitable. It's very important to teach the inevitable. Key for leadership. Leaders must understand birds. <laughs> Why? Birds are going to get part of the seed. It's called inevitable. And if you don't teach inevitability, people will be all upset. They won't know what to expect. We must all be prepared for what we call eventualities, the inevitable. So here's part of the scenario. The sower goes out to sow the seed and the birds get some. He sows some more seed and the birds get it. Now, this is a typical story of life. Is that fairly typical? Fairly typical. The birds are going to get some of the seed. Some of you building an organization, right? You're out recruiting. Say, John, I've got an important story for you to listen to. Could be the change of your life, earn some extra money or make it a full-time venture, whatever. But come and take a look. And he says, well, hey, I think I'm ready for something like that. Thursday night, I'll see you and let's go through it all. You say, wonderful. Comes Thursday night. John isn't there. You say, where is John? The birds, the birds. <laughs> the birds. Uh, who knows what form they come in? I don't know. It's called the inevitable, the inevitable. His brother-in-law said, sales. You're not going to get mixed up in sales. Who told you you were a salesman? All kinds of stuff that talk people out of a good idea. I don't know. Now, when the birds get some of the seed, you got one of a couple of choices. Number one, you can chase birds. You say, well, I'll go straighten this out. Well, here's the problem if you go try chasing birds to straighten things out. You have now left the field. And the law of averages isn't going to work for you anymore till you get back to the field. This is so important to know what to spend your time on and what not to waste your time on. The best thing to do is to spend your energy and time on the things that count and understand the law of averages, okay? And not chase the birds, but to stay in the field. Here's what it said the wise man did. He ignored the birds and he kept on sowing. Why? He was so bright, he understood the law of averages. Now here was some more of his experiences. Now he keeps on sowing the seed. Now the seed falls on rocky ground and the soil was shallow. We call this inevitable. I don't know how to miss this. This is called the stuff of life. It's so important to understand the seasons and the stuff of life and the ratios and the inevitables. This is so important, especially as a leader, so that you can help people through understanding how it is. And it said this time the seed takes root and the little plant starts to grow, but the soil is so shallow that the first hot day, the little plants wither and die. You say, wow, what a disappointment. Well, sure, you're going to be disappointed. Some people are going to try so little, even if you've got a good idea. Right. 30 days later, you say, we had this meeting. John wasn't here. So where is John? I said, I don't know. You say, well, I thought sure John had last 30 days. But he didn't. Why? It's called inevitable. Right. And who knows the reason why John isn't here anymore? Somebody said, boo. <laughs> and he quit. He quit. First hot day. Now, you're going to be disappointed, especially if it's somebody you like, somebody you know. But here's what you must learn to do as a leader. Discipline your disappointment. This is part of the challenge of life. Disciplining the disappointment. Understanding the law of averages. Now, here's what it said the wise man did. He kept on sowing. How brilliant. He was so well schooled in the law of averages. Now this time he sows the seed, it falls on thorny ground, and the little plant starts to grow, but the thorns choke it to death and it dies. Wow, what's this called? The inevitable. Do you know what the story called the thorns? The cares of life, little cares. Who knows the excuses some people use for not pushing on through and getting the job done? It's called inevitable. Some people are gonna try so little. They're going to let other things crowd out the good opportunities. I, and who knows why? I don't know why. I'm an amateur on this stuff. The key is to take the inevitable and take the obvious, right? Everybody should take obvious one, obvious two, <laughs> right? And study the obvious and not let it unduly disturb you and learn to manage the obvious so you can get on with the more important things in life. I call John up. I say, John, where were you last night? We had this meeting. John says, well, I can't make every meeting. I say, why not? John says, well, I got a lot of other things I got to do. I say, what are they? You won't believe the list John gave him. 
the backyard fence was sagging, and the dogs were about to get loose. You just can't let your dogs run loose. I said, okay, John. <laughs> John says, the screen door came off the hinges, and you just can't let things fall apart. You've got to take time, keep things fixed up. I said, okay, John. Some extra trash had piled up in the garage. You just can't let mountains of trash take over. You've got to take care of your trash. I said, okay, John. Some people have the incredible ability to major in minor things. I don't know why we call this inevitable. We call it a mystery. It's part of the scenario of life. The scenario of the story of the sower is to prepare us for the inevitable called the law of averages. Now here's what it says. The sower kept on sowing. He was so bright, evidently he'd been schooled in...